Take off. So is it a buffing that flies or a DJI that hams? Yeah, um, I sent that on April 24th of this year. And before that, I actually had the question about whether or not it was legal to put a repeater on a drone in September of 2021. When I was doing a drone demo. There was a guy in the front row who the pictures are too blurry to figure out who he is, but he had his call sign and he's the one who got me into a ham radio. So I decided I wanted to make a drone based repeater that anyone could afford. I didn't want to use anything esoteric, you know, nothing too expensive. The drones are already expensive enough. There's no need to put another thousand dollars worth of radios on it. So I started with the assumption that I wanted something cheap that you could use on an existing drone, just some 3D printed materials, and then maybe some sort of hardware, and that was it. And that's this project. So that's that's where we're at. prototype I just velcro it onto the drone and put both of the bow fangs on the top and then the little repeater box in the center from there on I started with different ideas these this one straightening it out using velcro on the bottom to screw it to the top of the drone you'll be seeing some of the flights as we go through these but uh, in general these were mostly just proof of concept to see what the best approach was at the time I hadn't realized that the DJI drones have a camera gimbal protector and their uh, their center of gravity is a little higher. So you end up with something that's not very stable when you put weight on top. But if you put the weight on the bottom, it gets a little better. But basically I've moved on, I moved on to more and more compact designs and eventually getting, you know, trying to adhere to the platform slightly better. That's the B5. And then I ended up on mounting at the bottom. And for these, it basically became a trial of adding and removing things from each of the prototypes, just to see what would fit best. At some points, removing back parts to lighten it, and then realizing there were failures at a certain failure point. Um, at, at some point, I settled on this kind of shape. Uh, these, this is version 13 and 14. Basically, roughly equivalent, but then at some point, I started removing the bottom edges for the clips, just to get a simpler thing. Um, at some point I tried removing the back part, I realized that that was necessary, otherwise the drones snap off. Um, going all the way to kind of this design, which was something that I had to do when I realized that if the, the radios were too close to each other, they would interfere with each other. So I had to come up with something further away, um, but eventually came back to the same regular shape as before. You know, just more reinforced, trying to clamp this onto the bottom of the drone and at the end i tried two prototypes which would put the radius off at 45 degree angles based on some information that i got and some nice uh, signal stick antennas that could go on the side just to get the emission components away from each of the radius as far as possible in obviously 45 and straightforward configuration all of this will be recycled by the way there is going to be a video on inexpensive PLA recycling at home which you should be seeing some footage about on the screen now. So get subscribed for that one, and then we're gonna get onto the radio repeater testing. If one Baofeng will piss people off, two Baofengs should make them feel better about this video, right? <laughs> All right, so here we have the Baofeng unit, which is gonna be on the bottom. What we've done is I've used a 12 volt adapter on the back, and then I tore that and plugged it into an XT60. And I can use a 3S battery on the drone unit itself to power the phones. I don't need, you know, six hours of talk time when the drone can barely hover for 30 minutes. And then we have the little repeater box. If you're getting real close, the little repeater box actually connects the radios. All right. So cameraman is over there and he's going to pan over to me to show that he is, you know, sitting. And then on the ground, there's two bow things and I plugged it all in. I've already connected it. And here's what I've done. I'm on 70 centimeters and he's on two meters. So when I broadcast on this, you shouldn't see anything on that radio unless that repeater is running. And he's gonna show you how it looks like. Okay, 4 yzk repeater check, repeater check. Cameraman, am I coming through clear? 
Okay, so anyways, it works. Uh, it's a crossband repeater, and now we're just gonna send this DJI drone out into outer space and see if it still works uh, 100 feet in the air. You can cut for now, camera. Okay, another check. Take off. All right, we're gonna take off. All right, here we go. Huh, that is unexpected. Uh, I've never gotten a battery error. Okay. The last time we were in a parking lot like this, the drone failed to take off. And the reason for that is because I wasn't using the triple blade cargo blades. So we came out here to an empty parking lot to try these three blades for 33% more lifting power, 50% more lifting power. Leave a comment with the math of what, how much more lifting power this will give us. So. Every online article about this says that you should carry about 500 grams of extra payload. We're almost there. You know, this whole setup is only an extra 650 grams. So it should be able to fly and it should be able to be a repeater on a drone. Let's check it out. I will say the coolest part of the Master Air School Engineering is how they managed to make a two blade propeller that makes less noise than this two blade propeller. That is like some engineering stuff. Sadly, you can't take out, look, sadly, you can't take out the, the propellers to put three master air screws on this one mm -hmm. because otherwise that'd be really cool, actually. <laughs> take off. Not a word, just cut. 